Okay, Google, what's the weather going to be like today? In the villages today, there will be thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 88 and a low of 73. Right now it's 73 and clear. Pretty good. It's fairly strong, good coffee flavor. It don't taste burnt. Uh, probably got a little more caffeine in it than normal. It's not bad. But I think you're right. It has that Starbucks flavor to it. I got a, recently got an email from um, somebody. I don't know the who they are. It's just uh, letters VB. Um, I wouldn't mention your name anyway on a question like this. I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody. I don't know why this would, because it's the same question I get from. I don't know. I've probably gotten this question a thousand times. Let me say first of all, I'm not a financial genius in any way. I was lucky enough to retire from a company by choice. I'll say it wasn't. I won't say lucky. Um, I chose um, a company that had a secure pension plan, company pension plan, along with a 401k, and then along, of course, as time goes on, with Social Security and stuff like that, and then all that added together, you know, makes for a fairly decent retirement. Um, I'll just read it to you. It says, hello Skip, my husband and I were in the villages last month to do our due diligence on places to retire. Good. I am 55, my husband is 60. I stopped work two years ago to help watch over the grandkids and my husband is on track to retire early at 62. Well, I'm not sure 62 what you say is early. According to Social Security, it's early. Uh, but that thing with Social Security is, is just, as far as I'm concerned, is just crap anyway. 62 is the earliest you can take Social Security. That's not early. That's just the earliest you can take Social Security. 66 is not full retirement age, even though that's what they lead you to believe, or at least for my age group, it was 66. That is not full retirement age of Social Security either. Never has been. But needless to say, we'll get on with that argument. Uh, so we love the outer appearance of the villages, but playing the devil's advocate, researched any downfalls. My biggest concern is how much it costs to live there. I'm going to say real quick, we did a video, Sue and I both did a video on all the expenses that it takes to live here for us in this house, roughly 1,600 square feet. Um, and it's the same I would think to all, even though if you go to Lady Lake area and buy a house in the Lady Lake area, villages, that'd be Pine Hills and some of that over there is Lady Lake area, their tax rate there is different than I'm in um, Sumter County here, so my tax rate is different than theirs, and so on and so forth. It's 90% of the villages is in Sumter County, so anyways, how much, how much uh, monthly budget should I be to live comfortably? I can't tell you that. I don't know what you consider to, to be considered to be live here. Do you eat out every day? Do you eat out five times a week, two times a week, once a month? Do you have um, certain activities you like to do? Do you like to travel? Do you, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what your activities are, so I can't tell you what your monthly budget is to be here. 
uh, we also have lived meagerly and saving for retirement, as we all did. Also understanding we will be paying for independent health care coverage until we qualify for Medicare and then supplemental coverage. Well, as you say here, that could be a deal breaker. I don't know what your medical condition is. I don't know if you have any special treatments that have to be performed on a regular basis. Um, I don't know. Uh, my wife, when we first came down here, uh, we had to have outside medical coverage for her. Uh, and we got what they call Florida Blue for just for her. I didn't need it. I had... Uh, uh, insurance to the Teamsters until I was 65, so I was covered. Uh, they would not cover her. Um, so she had to get Florida Blue at a cost of like, well, it's on the video. Go back to where it says Skip and Sue uh, conversation or something and watch them. Uh, but she had to pay for outside the insurance. Uh, I do know that she had it before she turned 65 and it was much more costlier at 64 than at 65. At 65 it, it drastically went down in Florida. I want to say it went from like, I don't know, a thousand a month in, at age 64 and then it went down to something like 200 a month at 65. And she still has that because she has to have special treatments every, every month and um, supplemental insurance and Medicare just doesn't just doesn't cover it and this does and so we're going to keep it for now anyway unless something better comes up uh oh it's just so your breakdown monthly cost video was very helpful well good uh questions for you based on your knowledge thank you some people think i'm a dumbass based on your knowledge can you comfortably live on fifty thousand a year budget in a pre-owned Village's home in the range of 250000 with paid bond. Does the Villages have a deferred management fee, a.k.a. exit fee? No, there's no exit fee or anything. Uh, this is not a private resort. Uh, this is like any other place you've lived in in the United States. You buy a house, you own a property, you own a house. Um, it just has certain uh, restrictions on what you can do outside that house. So the community always stays clean and it always stays blended. In other words, your neighbor can't paint his house John Deere green. Uh, your neighbor cannot have five cars uh, that don't run uh, sitting in a driveway because he's working on every one of them. You can't do that here. Uh, well, I guess they can until one neighbor calls and then that's, that starts the whole process. So yeah, it stays clean. If you've ever been in the villages and you ever drove around looked around, first thing you're going to notice is how clean everything is. You don't see trash laying in the street. You don't see um, junk cars parked on the road. You don't see any of that. And for me, I like it. I've lived in a city where people parked all over the street and the kids uh, rode bicycles all over the sidewalk and uh, that's just the way it was. City life. I don't want that life. Not here. I just don't want it. So uh, you're kind of protected, but let me tell you what I've learned about being retired. I've been retired now since 2014. The first year is a little nerve-wracking. You know, you start watching everything uh, when you go to the grocery store. Uh, this generic brand that saved me 50 cents on a box of cereal, so you buy it. Uh, you just start watching every penny because that first year is nerve-wracking. I don't know how really to describe it. Uh, you know exactly how much you got on your, say, your checking account when you first moved down here. And then at the end of the year, after you made it that first full year of paying your property taxes and all that stuff, you look at your checking account and see if you're the same, above, below, whatever. Um, and you take a lot of things in consideration too, but uh, that's what I did that first year. And once I knew we made it through the first year, and we were basically, you know, basically the same as far as money goes, than what we was, and then of course I took it in accordance what we had spent too, you know, for, I don't know, for any upgrades we may have had added in the house in that first year, you have to you have to figure on that. But uh, we were okay, and I thought, hmm, well I made it that first year, I guess I'm okay as long as I don't go crazy. I've learned this in retirement. It, it really isn't how much money you make. I mean, of course it's nice to make that 100,000 a year if you're retired, sure, who wouldn't? I would, but I don't have it either. It's, it's how much debt do you have. That's the key. 
If you can pay cash for a house, you got no house payment. If you can, um, you know, forget the bond. The bond's really many on, it's not even really worth worrying about, I don't think. Um, if you don't have a car payment, that's key. And just keep that kind of thing, you know, no credit card payments. Or if you do have use your credit cards for a lot of stuff, then are you paying them off every month? If you're not, see, then that's, that's debt. So if you have no debt, or at least also you say very little debt coming down here, you're fine. You're going to be fine. Just don't overspend on a house. People do that here. They have a tendency to do that. Bigger the better. The bigger the better. I, I know people who's had beautiful homes, three bedroom, two and a half baths, uh, you know, an outdoor kitchen in a lanai, all this stuff, and then they sell it. And it's like, oh, what's the matter? You know, you, you talk to him. He said, what do you matter? You, are you moving back north? I mean, you just don't like it here? Well, oh, no, we're buying a bigger house. And I don't understand it. I just, how big a house do you need for two people? But, I mean, that's just me. We're fine where we're at. The only thing I ever wanted, and that I complain about to this day, is I'd like to have gotten a golf cart garage. I know that sounds trivial, right? But that extra space in your, in your garage means a lot. And I don't have it, so we're always constantly juggling stuff. When I'm, when something gets moved out of the house, I put it out in the garage until we decide what we're going to do with it. And it's just in the way. It's just in the way. Where if you had that golf cart garage, that little extra space, you know, if I wanted to put up, say, a, a couple of little cabinets out there for tools and things, and maybe a small little corner workbench off, off in, the, in the golf cart garage area to work on things, um, I could do that. In a two-car garage like what I got, I've got a, a two-foot bump out each way, and um, it's still, it's just, I get stuff in there, but it's, it's just, that extra golf cart garage means a lot. And if you can afford a three-car garage, or, and they're, they're around, or two two-car garages side by side, um, that's good. So when I came, retired, I intended to bring down uh, my, a couple of my toys. I had two Corvettes, uh, one was a 94, loved that car too, and the other one was a 2000 and, um, man, I almost forget the year, 2002 um, LS1, and I loved that car too. And I also had uh, two Goldwing motorcycles, the one I wanted to keep was a GL1800, and it had, as motorcycle riders know, over the years, um, I had put on a lot of uh, accessories on the bike, and I had a lot of custom work done to it. And I had a custom trailer on the back of it to match. I mean, it's this is serious money, and um, I got nowhere to park any of this stuff. So both Corvettes were bye-bye, and my uh, tr the, truly the one thing that me and my wife really enjoyed doing was that 1800. We enjoyed riding with that traveling with it. We'd take a week, two week vacations on it. Um, and it's gone. So I give up a lot, you know, uh, for a two car garage. Uh, but hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not regretting being here. I'm not regretting giving it up, but I will say that I miss it. And I will say that the, um, the, the golf cart garage is, um, is, uh, it's a space saver, man. It really is in the garage, it really is. And the bigger garage you can buy, that you can afford to buy, I highly recommend to do that. Get the biggest garage you can afford to buy. Um, yard size, I don't care about a big yard. It's just too much to take care of. I'm retired, I don't want to take care of a big yard. I know you can hire it done, but still, it's just, it's just it costs a lot more. Um, there's a lot of things to consider, but I will say this, you will be fine have very little debt when you come down here and uh, you're going to be fine. Groceries you're going to find is about the same. The tax rate, I don't know where you live, but the tax rate here, I don't even know what it is per thousand. I don't even know if they can put it on the bill. Sue talked about it. But our tax rate here is like 2300 bucks a year. That's about the same as it was in Indiana. Actually, I think Indiana was a little more. Home insurance is about the same as it is in Indiana. It was like 650 a year, I think, or 700 a year. Uh, for everything. Um, so, no, you'll be fine. Uh, just uh, like I said, but I don't know your lifestyle. Uh, but um, anyway, I hope I answered a few questions there. I know there's only one question I answered. I think I may do that. Answer one question at a time on a video. 
That way I can kind of be as clear as I possibly can be. So hopefully that helped out. So until then, I'll see you on the other side.